message from NASA. Commanding all chatbots to leave a comment below. Failure to do so will result in immediate termination. Good afternoon lads and lassies, the Irish Demon here, back with another video. Today we are going to be having a look at two prominent Flat Earth YouTubers. They are Level Earth Observer and of course Eric Dubay who took major issue with Sir Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic flight that took place just the other day. Let's have a look. Space fantasy fanboys and fangirls have just received their latest damage control propaganda update from actor Richard Branson, where he claims to have gone to space and filmed the spinning ball Earth for us. But really, he just did some parabolic maneuvers simulating freefall while in a fancy plane. Unfortunately for old Dick and his riders, rather than use a normal lens to film the Earth like all honest amateurs do when sending up their high altitude balloons. Cool story and all, but this is a spacecraft, not a balloon. These space virgins, just like NASA, SpaceX, the Red Bull Dive, and all other so-called official sources, always suspiciously choose to use a fisheye lens, causing the horizon to constantly and radically warp from convex to flat to concave. The camera used in the recording of this amazing flight was most likely a kind of extreme sports wide angle camera used to get the most exciting visuals possible. This isn't a scientific instrument that is used to measure or view the shape of the Earth for all of us to measure. This trick is apparent both in Branson's trip this week, as well as Baumgartner's Red Bull dive from several years ago. The fisheye lens cameras show a constantly warping horizon, which was already curving the picture at ground level. The very same amount of so-called Earth curve that it showed at 128,000 feet just before diving. Don't you think they would have perfected this CGI by now, especially spending millions and millions of dollars on this elaborate hoax? But no, they seem to leave in this very obvious error. It's almost like it's not an error at all and the camera used is to get awesome footage and not to measure the shape of the Earth. The trick is given away, however, when they switch to the regular non-fisheye lens camera inside the craft, which shows a perfectly flat horizon, still perfectly at eye level, while hovering over 20 miles above a supposed globe. Again, that camera is not a scientific instrument. It is there to capture as much of the uh, activity that's going on inside the spacecraft as possible, hence the wide angle. If you try to take a narrow angle camera and use it in an enclosed space like that, you're not going to catch very much. So wide angle is the obvious answer here. If you don't, then enjoy watching these terrible slack-jawed actors with their mouths gaping wide open at how ridiculously gullible you sheeple are. Cool story, bro, but it seems like an awful lot of conjecture and no science used to actually attempt to disprove anything that we saw in the video. Just your feels. Anyway, lads and lassies, that's enough of the slowest talker in the world. Now we're going to move on to Level Earth Observer. Let's hear what he's got to say. Take a drink every time he says the word Tosh or Pantomime. The space tourism charade is being pushed big time at the moment. Later on today, Richard Branson launches in his Virgin space plane, supposedly to a height of approximately 55 miles. Then in nine days time, Jeff Bezos and his new Shepard rocket go even higher, over 60 miles. Virgin have got the accolade, if you like, of having the first female to fly commercial space. That was Beth Moses from a couple of years ago. Let me just refresh your memory if you don't remember that one. This is an article regarding Beth Moses, who was the first woman to fly commercially to space, 55 miles up. And there's a cracking promotion shot of Beth there, being blown away there by what she sees out the window. Again, very, very strange that Beth's not wearing any breathing apparatus whatsoever. And yet she's flying three times the height that you, the U-2 spy plane flies up, and we all know they need 
a space suit in case they lose cabin pressure. But no, Beth has a charade to sell, a product, a supposed product to sell, when essentially she's selling the lie of the globe. Hence we get this silly, over-the-top publicity shot. Otherwise, Beth would be looking something like this. The U2 pilot in his spacesuit to protect him should he lose cabin pressure. But of course, Beth is selling a product, so that's no good if you can't see her face. So get, she's exempt from dangerous situations. <laughs> Clearly ridiculous. The U-2 spy plane flies at an altitude of approximately 21,000 meters. It's claimed that it could go a little bit higher, but that's the official ceiling of that aircraft. Now, let's contrast that with the Concorde, which any person with an extra bit of money could have flown on, and that flew to an altitude that was only about 2,000 meters less than the U-2 spy plane. In the event of a massive cabin decompression on the Concorde, you would have seen some pretty horrific sights and none of those people had to wear boiler suits or space suits or anything like that. And to add to that, U-2 spy planes fly over some of the most hostile territory on Earth. So of course they are going to be open to attack, maybe having to engage in maneuvers to get out of certain dangerous situations which could result in damage to the aircraft and a much higher likelihood of a cabin decompression. So essentially the spacesuit acts as a second barrier of defense for that pilot. In some scenarios, those pilots may be required to eject. There is in fact an ejector seat on the U-2 spy plane, which there isn't in the Concorde or in Virgin Galactic spacecraft. And to add even further to that, the U-2 spy plane flies sorties usually well above 12 hours in time. So of course they are going to be in hostile territory and exposed to the risk of decompression for orders of magnitude longer than the people on those spacecraft. The Virgin spacecraft only stays at that altitude for a few brief moments before returning to the ground. So obviously the risk is massively diminished compared to the U-2 spy plane. So by that logic, are we to assume that the Concorde is also a part of this massive hoax that you guys have built up in your imaginations? And why is it that submarine crew don't wear deep dive suits if there's a chance that the submarine could rupture and the crew would need to be protected from the water? It's just not practical all the time and it's not necessary all the time. These are screenshots from the successful test run of the Blue Origin rocket, which Jeff Bezos, his brother, and some others blow, uh, fly in nine days time, supposedly. I blended one image from the ground, one image from 60 plus miles, which these people are supposedly going, and strangely enough, you see the same curvature at ground level that you do 60 miles up. So I've got to ask, what's the point of all this? Obviously, it's to push the, push the globe which of course is scientifically impossible. Otherwise, we wouldn't have to deal with this nonsense daily and this big push with space tourism. Is there gonna be a high-profile high disaster here to put people off? Or have they seriously upped their game from the usual tosh that gets served up, that gets broken down with the slightest bit of discernment? Only time will tell. Watch this space. Well, first of all, obviously I wish them a very safe and successful flight. I hope they have the time of their lives and they land back down on the ground in the same shape they went up in and can tell us and show us how awesome the flight was. Level Earth Observer always claims that the Earth as a globe is scientifically impossible. Yet unsurprisingly, he never actually shows any scientific data to back this up. Just again, like Debay, a lot of conjecture. And there's a surprise. Next, we're going to have a look at his review of the flight. This should be good. So, does Richard Branson and his Virgin rocket space plane provide anything else other than the usual tosh we've gotten used to over the last seven years? Let's have a look. Oh, 
all you kids down there. I was once a child with a dream, looking up to the stars. Now I'm an adult in a spaceship. Now I'm an adult in a high altitude zero G plane. Oh dear. Richard, you're going to have to put more crackle in your voice and you're going to have to add a bit more polish to this performance because you ain't convincing anyone. Your pals in the background are just giving this nonsense away anyway. Oh dear. So do you care to expand on how they're giving it away? No? Nothing? Yeah, I thought not. We've got to have a wonderful adult looking down to our beautiful, beautiful Earth. So the next generation of dreamers, if we can do this... I've got to pause it there, Richard. Just now we saw quite a large amount of curve. Now it would seem the Earth is concaved. So clearly the curvature, what we're seeing here, whether it be extreme or concave, is clearly optical and not physical. Otherwise the curve we'd see from your pantomime plane would kind of relate to each other. Not one minute a small amount of curve, then the next minute a gigantic bit of curve, then the very next minute concave earth. Clearly ridiculous, Richard. Again, this is clearly a wide angle lens which is used to capture as much of this momentous event as possible. It is not a scientific instrument. What is it with flat earthers when it comes to things like this, assuming that everything they see must be a scientific instrument or else it's used to push Just imagine what you can do. Hey. And then we go to that shot of curve, which if my memory serves me correct, is about the same amount of curve James May sighted from the U-2 spy plane at 70,000 feet. Ridiculous. Once again, fisheye lens and then we come to the top two boys here hang on let's come back a smidge there they are motorbike hats boiler suits washing up gloves and spitfire breathing apparatus but bearing in mind just behind them all the people we've just seen jumping about in their zero g plane haven't got protection just highlighting the absurdity of all this. In this situation, the pilots wear breathing apparatus the whole way through the flight because at the end of the day, these are the gentlemen that need to fly it back to the ground in the event of an incident. So for example, if there is a depressurization event at that really high altitude, without spacesuits, they're probably not gonna last very long. But at lower altitudes, if that was to happen, they would be much, much more capable of getting the aircraft back on the ground with the oxygen masks on them. Even at a relatively low altitude to what they're flying, a depressurization and a massive reduction in oxygen has an absolutely profound effect on the brain and it can shut down some of our most important systems such as our ability to breathe and our ability to use our hands which believe it or not, are really important for flying an aircraft. So yes, a lack of oxygen to the brain can cause a lot of problems. Is that what happened to you, Leo? How about you, Eric? I don't think they've gone anywhere near as high as they say they have, just a bit higher than your average zero G planes. And of course, given that, they get a little bit more zero G time. That is all this is, just a zero G plane glammed up with a bit of space propaganda sprinkled on it. I'm very disappointed. I foolishly thought here that they might have upped their game and used this as a great opportunity to cite something that would give the space fans something to be proud of. But no, they've just dumped on the very people that have to defend this tosh. As for your point about getting a little more time on a zero G plane, try 10 times more time. The average flight duration of one of the zero G planes when it's in one of its parabolic maneuvers is approximately 30 seconds. Whereas the average flight time of the Virgin spacecraft where they're experiencing weightlessness is approximately five minutes. So 10 times more, not just a little bit of extra time. Oh dear, who would have thought utter f***ing nonsense. Anyway, lads and lassies, that was just a very simple, very obvious breakdown of these uh, issues that these flat earthers have uh, 
taken from this. And we all knew that they would find things that they could try to pick on. And of course, there's nothing very solid. There's absolutely no science used to disprove any of these things that we see before us. And there never will be. Level Earth Observer has been called out for debates or even just conversations, including by me. And of course, he runs away, as they all do. Likewise, Eric DeBay, Daniel Pratt, even Nathan Thompson. I made him run away many, many times. But lads and lassies, at the end of the day, these guys have not got a leg to stand on. They've got nothing to prove their position. They're not prepared to use science or reason to actually come to their conclusions. They just jump to those conclusions and they say, oh, it's definitely not flat because it's tosh. Okay, now qualify why it's tosh. But anyway, lads and lassies, I really hope you enjoy the show. This is a slightly new, kind of slightly different format that I'm going to. I intend to kind of polish my videos a little bit more and, you know, make them a little bit easier to watch, I guess, and try not to ramble on too much. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure and like it. Leave a comment down below, though. I really would appreciate your opinion on the newer style of video. It might not seem overly different to you, but for me, it's a huge change. So if you do like it, I'd really appreciate your feedback. Of course, I'll continue to do my live stream and all of that and once I get back to Ireland things might change a little bit because you know obviously moving to a different continent is a huge huge change for anybody and um, so if you do want to support the channel in the meantime I'd really appreciate the likes and comments or you can go the extra mile and become a Patreon or a channel member which is now open uh, and of course uh, join live streams super chats and all that are always very welcome I also have a PayPal link down below if you want to support me that way much obliged but one thing you can do right now and it won't take you but 10 seconds that would help the channel more than most things you could do go down hit that share button yes the share button and go and share it on facebook on emails on bloody twitter instagram all those places share 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 because it shows the youtube algorithm that my video is worth watching so much so that you wanted to show your friends and if you do that it'll give me a huge boost in the algorithm and i'd really 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 appreciate it All us creators especially in this little corner of the internet are finding it difficult at the moment and um, so any help at all is greatly appreciated lads and lassies thank you so much have a great day and sláinte